Hey everybody, welcome to a very special episode of American Heroes Outdoors. Or maybe we should call it this week, American Heroes Indoors. Here we are at Range Systems Incorporated in New Hope, Minnesota, in an incredibly advanced indoor range. Today you're going to meet three veteran entrepreneurs and a very special young veteran that works for a company and helps those veteran entrepreneurs get a good start. We're going to get some range instruction. We're going to use this incredible indoor facility and you'll see how they use it. And then we're going to talk to veterans about why shooting is so important. So we hope you enjoy the show and let's get right to it. Hero, a person who is admired for courage, outstanding achievements, or noble qualities. There is no mold for heroism. Heroes are not born. Rather, they are defined by their actions. American Heroes Outdoors is a 501c3 nonprofit organization, and our mission is to share the stories of these heroes while helping them heal in the great outdoors. Join us on our quest to honor service members who define the word hero. American Heroes Outdoors is brought to you by Shields, Gate City Bank, Woodland Resort, Warrior Boats, SNS Promotional Group, Evan Rood, and Commemorative Firearms. So Randall, tell us about Range Systems. Who is Range Systems and what are they all about? Well, Range Systems builds shoot houses and shooting ranges for law enforcement, military, commercial, and home customers all around the world. So what is the origin of range systems? Well, our origin story uh, really dates back to about 20 years ago when we started working with the U.S. Special Forces. Since then, we've been able to build facilities that help people stay safe and get great results by improving their training. So what makes range systems unique? Well, at Range Systems, we're known as the original rubber range guys because it's all about our proprietary ballistic rubber. Welcome to the Range Systems Tactical Range. Um, if you are familiar with using our ballistic rubber, then you already know its ability. If not, I'm gonna explain it for you here. So each sidewall, including the overhead, is uh, ballistic steel with a minimum of two inches of our ballistic rubber on top of it. Basically, the only way we cannot shoot is back towards our marketing team there. They will appreciate that, <laughs> okay? I originally, because I, I swam competitively in high school, I wanted to go into the underwater demolition team of the U.S. Navy SEALs. And so that's what I signed up for, but of course you have to go through boot camp. And during boot camp, my commanding officer uh, discouraged me, talked me out of basically going to, uh, into the SEALs and so then I tried to get into submarines and uh, I ended up with, on surface ships as an interior communications electrician. And so I was responsible for the nuclear alarm weapon systems on the USS Wichita. In case we carried a nuclear weapon, we had the alarm systems to make sure that it was kept safe. You're gonna come out to the target, get your sight picture, sight alignment, squeeze, boom, it goes off. Take a breath when you're ready to shoot three more, go ahead, punch out. Three more, boom, boom, boom. Come back, take a breath, all right? So we're not trying to rush through this, right? We're just, maybe you guys shoot all the time, maybe you don't, maybe it's been a while. So we're just gonna get rid of those jitters. I'm gonna be watching and assessing, seeing what you may be doing that you could probably tighten up, maybe change, modify a little bit, just to help you out. Well, even today, I still dream about being back on the ship because I, I loved that experience. I did two uh, West Packs uh, to Japan and to the Philippines and visited about 24 different countries over there during that time frame. This was from 1973 to 1977. And I was on a 
underway replenishment ship, so we did operations where we uh, provided fuel and, and food and ammunition to other ships while we were uh, on the ocean, so it was underway replenishment. And uh, this was the USS Wichita, which was AOR-1. And uh, it was just such a pleasure to uh, be on the ship and enjoy visiting those other uh, countries. Um, I have a strong faith, and so I had a number of other sailors on the ship with me, and we would go into ports and, and go visiting churches, and we just had a tremendous time. You see how just with that little difference, yeah. your shot pattern went into this yeah, yeah, yeah. compared to all over there, like it was. Stay tuned for more American Heroes Outdoors. Woodland Resort is located on the north shore of the famous Devil's Lake in North Dakota. Whether you're hunting, fishing, or just here to relax, Woodland Resort has the amenities to keep you comfortable. Woodland Resort is the only full-service lakeside resort on Devil's Lake. With six types of lodging options, including the new legendary suites, a convenient bait and tackle shop, indoor air-conditioned fish cleaning station, and much more. To learn more about a getaway for all seasons, log on to woodlandresort.com. Commemorative Firearms, a division of SNS Promotional Group, a great way to mark a significant time, place, or event and raise dollars for your organization. We have provided limited edition, exquisitely enhanced commemorative firearms for many special celebrations, like NDSU Bison Championships, PDR, NFR, and NASCAR events, quality firearms, and true craftsmanship of unparalleled engraving technology. Preserve the special events in your life. Learn more at commemorativefirearms.net. So what we're going to do, guys, sort of like we did before, squeeze off three rounds, take a break, reassess, sight picture, sight alignment, three more rounds, okay? Shoot for the head, shoot for center mass, whatever tickles your fancy. I'm from Redmond, Minnesota. I uh, grew up playing sports and, and living on the river, Mississippi River. I uh, went to college at Carleton College in Northfield, Minnesota. Got an economics degree. Went through the first part of my early 20s uh, looking for interesting work. I never wanted to be behind a desk. In 2006, I sort of stopped everything. I, was, I didn't find any meaning and joy in the work that I was doing. I volunteered to be in the Army at that time uh, because I felt like there was something really important going on and I wanted to contribute to the, uh, you know, the thousands of people in my generation and, and younger that were um, putting themselves on the line. So, um, so that's what I did. I enlisted in 2006 and then served uh, for four years uh, as a deep sea diver. Person's gonna step out with the rifle. You're coming out to about here. Boom, engage, one, two on each target. One, two, one, two, one, two, step. One, two on the left. So that's four targets with the rifle. We're gonna secure it, switch to your secondary, engage handgun, step, handgun, big step, handgun, and handgun. Okay, two rounds each one. Well, the company is called Shadow Culture, and it's a consulting firm that is a, is a veteran advocacy firm. So right now, I've turned all of the interviews and research that I've done uh, to help veterans get the help they need with mental health, uh, or I like to call it just resilience training. And I've, I've taken all of those stories and all, all of what I've learned and put that into a training program called Veteran Cultural Competence. And what that is is a diversity and inclusion program for uh, companies. And so I offer that to uh, employers, and as well as storytelling. So oftentimes when I get a consulting job, the first thing I do 
is go shadow some veterans inside the organization. I don't, I don't really like to rely on secondhand research uh, because I, I recognize the, the myths and, narr and false narratives that are out there. So I like to go learn from the actual people who are inside the company, listen to their stories, you know, understand what they're going through, what could be improved, what's working well, um, and then you know, give feedback and some recommendations to the organization itself. Shoot is ready. And fire. Hit it. I had grown up listening to my grandpa, who was in World War II, tell his stories about what he experienced in, in Europe, and that had always uh, got me interested in the military. And then when 9-11 happened, that was really uh, a big deal for me. I was a junior in high school at the time. And at that point, I knew I wanted to go in the military. I wanted to fight for the country. In September 2004, I went to basic training and in infantry school down at Fort Benning, Georgia. Graduated from that and then was sent to Fort Campbell as a member of the 101st Airborne. I was assigned to 3rd Brigade Rakassans and then deployed to Beji, Iraq in September 2005. And I ended up uh, returning from Beji in June of 2006. To segue into how I got into working with veterans, I went over to Lurie, LLP, where I'm at now. About a year ago, there was a couple other veterans that started working there. One's a Navy vet and one's a, one's a Army vet, another Army vet. And when they came in, I went and talked to them and said, you know, we should probably get something going where we um, are working to uh, reach out to veteran entrepreneurs and work with them. I've been out of the Army for about eight years now, and now it's really been nice to reconnect with other veterans. And the thing that's really surprised me through this, and I probably should have known it, but I just couldn't believe how, as I've been networking with veterans, how big that network really is and how many professional veterans there are in the Twin Cities area and just all the great things that they're doing um, entrepreneurially. And um, it's been really great to uh, be able to leverage kind of the resources that Lurie has to start supporting those veterans and uh, help them reach their goals. Prosperity is today's investment in tomorrow's promise, the promise of a better way of life. With every act of kindness, every act of creation, and with every act of love, we strengthen our community. And when we stand together as a community, we accomplish the impossible. We can choose to pass through life, or we can choose to pass on a better way of life. The Warrior Story continues with the best tracking, driest ride in the industry. Designed with a high degree of dead rise and bow flare to push water out and down for a smooth, dry, comfortable ride. Ensuring your safety no matter the weather. With a lifetime hull warranty, Warrior Boats are built to last. To find a dealer near you, go to warriorboatsinc.com. Warrior Boats, a legend reborn. Here's what people are saying about SNS Promotional Group. My name is Staff Sergeant David Morse and I am the Vice President of Wounded Warriors Guide Service. Wounded Warriors Guide Service and SNS Promotional Group have been partners for almost six years. Once we found SNS Promotional Group, it all came together. Working with SNS has been a breeze. We tell them what we want, they bring their cards to the table, and then we deliver our product. If your company or organization is looking for a solution to a problem or a way to reach out to your clients, reach out to SNS Promotional Group. You'll be glad you did. I knew I wanted to join the Army since I was really young. I was three years old. I remember getting my first pair of camouflage pants. And I guess I was always, grew up, I was always that Army kid. Always, always wearing camouflage, painting my face, running around. I got in and it just, you could tell it was my passion right away. And I just absolutely loved it more than anything else. So I did college a little bit at the early uh, onset of my career in the, in the National Guard and didn't fit too well. And, uh, 
jumped on a deployment to Bosnia. And I got back from that, tried to go to every single school possible, and uh, jumped on another deployment after, right after Bosnia. Uh, then I went immediately to Iraq, uh, 0405. I was light artillery in my first half of the career and doing all towed and stuff like that. So it was a big transition when I, when I jumped ship and went to heavy. It, uh, it may be the same um, MOS, but uh, it's a lot different mentality and different, different thinking. But during that whole transition time, I uh, signed up to go to gunsmithing school. I just, you know, I, I, I liked guns, you know. I was on a couple shooting teams, um, did a couple competitions for the military. And it, it just, I was kind of gravitating that, that way. I kind of got a technical mindset, like tinkering and, you know, fixing on cars and stuff like that. So it, it kind of fit me pretty good. And uh, through those transition years, it just kind of built and built. And I was like, well, this is what I want to do the second I started college. And the wife uh, moved up north with me by the college and spent four years up there going to school, working as a gunsmith, getting, getting used to the trade, selling guns, getting to retail a little bit, kind of getting my feet wet. In, uh, we were sitting up there and then the wife was like, well, I want, we want to start raising the family. And um, that kind of whole thing started happening. She wanted to be closer to her family. And uh, we uh, moved basically back to where we grew up and I started a gunsmithing business. And, yes. Yeah, that's where we're at now. Very safety orientated. I, I feel just because you have good equipment doesn't mean you can operate it properly. You know, a 15 year old driver that's got their permit cannot drive a car near as good as Dale Earnhardt Jr. You know, it takes practice and so when they come in and buy a pistol they go through and, and, and explain the safeties first on kind of how the certain firearm operates whether it be you know anything from a semi-auto to just a regular single shot and I explain the safeties uh, the interlocks in, in, in the firearms that um, prevent them from going off uh, unintentionally. So there's a lot of interlocks in firearms that a lot of people don't even know they just think there's a, a little safety button on them but there's actually a lot more internal safeties that kind of um, protect the gun from going off. Uh, after that, once I kind of understand how the thing works, then I get into the safety of the handling, you know, the loading, you know, how to, how to operate, how to hold it, and um, getting into, you know, when to put your finger on the trigger and, and that whole process. Once I get, feel comfortable with that, usually I have a little shooting range inside my shop there. Um, nothing as nice as this facility, but uh, um, a little range, and then if they're really uncomfortable, I'll sit and I'll, I'll do a couple coaching sessions with them just to get them comfortable with their firearm. I, I think it's important that we recognize the service of our veterans and service members, whether they serve during a war or not. The key to that is changing the perspective by civilians as to what the capabilities and and uh, skills of our transitioning military are. There's a number of organizations, Shadow Culture is one of them, that is building a dialogue around that perception. The company that I formed two years ago uh, is based on a, a number of things and one key element is that we're hiring our current trained military uh, to do cybersecurity with some additional training that we provide them. But the fundamental uh, basis is that I am a service disabled veteran owned small business. And today there's a large um, groundswell uh, where corporations are trying to hire uh, supplier diversity. Something about veterans is just, you, it's so easy to, to, to connect. It's like you already have this connection and as soon as you find out that you're veterans, you immediately have a relationship there. So it's just been, Great, and the people here at Range Systems have all been really great, and they uh, obviously really have a lot of uh, respect in, uh, for veterans and really support veterans, and so it's, it's been an awesome experience. Plus, I mean, at, a lot of times when you go to gun ranges, unless you're doing a specific class, you don't get to do the kind of stuff that we did today. So that's probably the first time I've been in a shoot house style environment since I got out of the Army. The training that Brandon provided in the range was great. I'm not. You know, I don't own my own uh, gun, and I, I, I've never really found a lot of joy in that part of the military. But 
getting this training and just something about shooting uh, today really felt really felt good. It's something unique about the, the camaraderie. It doesn't matter what service, what era. Uh, I feel like I can let a part of me out that I don't always get to. Especially with these shooting outdoor events, it's a, it's a good like woo-saw thing for, for vets to kind of get together. It's really just getting to talk with those, those fellow vets and that, that link up time is kind of a good way to um, talk about the things that stress you out or you know those dumb little things and see it from someone kind of that has that perspective that you have instead of someone that you know you don't really know or some program that you just click on the computer this face to face and trigger time's a good relaxing time. Randall what a great day here shooting on the range. Uh, getting to hear those veteran stories, watching them interact and, and really use those weapon systems. You know folks, shooting sports is a great way to get outside with your family or come to a beautiful indoor range facility and spend the time together in a very safe environment. And I'd like to leave you with this. We'll see you on the range.